So coming to the second part of the identification of ticks based on the morphology. So we previously we have discussed about the genera Ripicephalus, Hyloma and Amblyoma. Now we will uh, just finish off with the three other important genera that is Dermacenter, Ixodis and Hemophysalis. Now, now coming to Dermacenter. Now this Dermacenter, uh, they are also a group of ornate ticks but you see the mouth part. How will you differentiate between a Dermacenter and Amblyoma? Because Dermacenter is also ornate, Amblyoma is also ornate. The most important thing is the mouth parts. Amblyoma is longirostrate, the Dermacenter is brevirostrate. Now second important character, the basis capitulum, you see it is rectangular in shape. The basis capitulum is rectangular in shape. In hyaloma and amblyoma, the eyes are present on the dorsal aspect of the scutum. But you see, in case of dermacenter, the eyes are present on the they are present on the lateral margin of the scutum. They are present on lateral margin of the scutum. Now uh, the, the eyes are the fistons are present. The festoons are present. Now coming to the other important structures. Now in case of males. So in case of males, the most important thing, again like hyaloma, the first coxa has got two strong spurs. Amblyoma has got a single spur. Hyaloma has got two spurs. Dermacenter also has two spurs. So how will you differentiate between dermacenter and hyaloma? Mouth parts. Then fourth coxa you can see the fourth coxa the fourth coxa is the largest it has got a very large coxa fourth coxa is very large it is the largest coxa so that is one important character then the there is a posterior anal groove okay but there are no plates in case of hyaloma distinct in case of male hyaloma distinct subanal adenal and axillary adenal plates are there in case of dermacenter, in case of amblyoma, sorry, amblyoma, no plates are there, but there are posterior plaques, small plaques. In dermacenter, there are no plates as well as no plaques. All the plaques and plates are absent. Okay. The most important distinct feature is this one. The fourth coxa is very large. Now coming to hemophysalis. This hemophysalis is also another important uh, genera. You can easily identify hemophysalis. How will you identify hemophysalis? Can you see the see the mouth part? See the mouth part here. The second palpal segment. The pulp has got three segments. Okay. The middle segment has got an edge or it is angular. It is angular. So that the width of the pulp is wider than the basis capitulum. So you see the width of the basis capitulum and you see the width of the pulp the width of the pulp is more than that of the basis capitulum why because the second pulpal segment forms an angle these are inordinate ticks brevirostrate the festoons are present the another important character of hemophysalis is till now we have seen the ticks have eyes hemophysalis is the hard tick which doesn't have eyes you don't see eyes here okay brevirostrate tick the pulps are wider than the basis capitulum. Festoons are present, eyes are absent. Now coming to the ventral aspect. Again in the ventral aspect you see, there are spurs on the first coxa. Okay, second coxa and fourth coxa. You see the first coxa has got a strong spur as we see in case of amblyoma the second coxa also has a spur the fourth coxa also has a spur but the, the second and the fourth coxa the spurs are of variable sizes but the large spur is present on the first coxa the anus is present there is a posterior groove there are no plates so you will find there are no plates in case of hemophysalis there are no plates in dermacenter there are small no plates in case of ventral plates in case of amblyoma okay 
now coming to Ixodes. This is another important uh, genera. Now in case of Ixodes, you find Ixodes, they are again long illustrated ticks. They are long illustrated ticks as you can see. There is a strong spur on the first coxa. But the most important thing by which you can identify Ixodes, immediately you can identify Ixodes. You have, to, you have to never look at any other structure is the groove you see the anal groove is anterior so it has got an anterior anal groove Exodus is the only genus which has got an anterior adana, anterior anal groove while as other genera of ticks the Ripicephalus, Haemophysalis, Hyaloma, Dermocenter, Amblyoma they all have posterior anal groove whereas Ixodes is the only genus which has got anterior anal groove. Now coming to the male. So in male you will find ventral plates. What are the ventral plates? You see this is genital pore. There is a ventral plate anterior to the genital pore. There is a ventral plate posterior to the genital pore. There is a ventral plate adjacent to the genital pore there is this ventral plate posterior to the anus so ventral plates are present anterior to the genital pore posterior to the genital pore lateral to the anal pore and posterior to the anal pore so entire ventral surface is covered by the ventral plates sclerotized ventral plates this is very important in case of the male exodid ticks Another important thing, there is a large spur on the first coxa. Here also, there is a large spur on the first coxa. So again, a revision of the important character. The most important character of Ixodes, the anterior groove is, the anal groove is anterior to the anus. The anal groove is anterior to the anus. In case of males, uh, the entire ventral surface is covered with thick sclerotized cuticular plates the first coxa first coxa have a single strong spur the first coxa have a single strong spur so with this we complete the uh, identification of the ticks at the generic level uh, there are two other ticks which i have left out that is the genus margaropus and genus aponima margaropus and aponima for the characteristics of the ticks, you can look into the keys of different ticks. I will be posting you the material. I can post you the material related to the identification of ticks later on if you require, if you ask me. Thank you.